نحمدو و نصلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم فرنس ویلکم تو اور قرآن کلاب We're starting our first session of Tafsir al-Quran. We are beginning from chapter 30, inshallah. Me and Maryam will explain the Tafsir of the Holy Quran. And then at the end, we will all do a quiz about the Surah to develop understanding, inshallah. Over to you, Maryam. Today we are starting with the Tafsir of the first Surah of Job 30, which is Surah an naba it is Surah number 78. The Surah revealed in Matba and contains 40 verses. Naba means the tidings, news and information. Surah Naba begins with a question and ends with a powerful verse portraying intense regret on the Day of Judgment. In the early days of Prophet Muhammad wasallam's mission, the disbelievers of Makkah would get together and argued about what it what the Prophet Muhammad was teaching. Some people liked the message of it, of Islam, and some became so angry that they wanted to fight against it. The strangest news for the Arabs at that time was the news that we will become alive after we died and there will be a day of judgment when we have to answer for our deeds and what we did on this earth. This strange concept is what they used to gather and argue about and would go to the Prophet Muhammad for their fault to answer what these people were disagreeing about. Allah reveals a certain number of verses as a response to all these questions. But the news of the hereafter was not just news for the people of Makkah, but at that time, but it's news for all of us today too. Almost like breaking news that you, I and everybody listening still needs to pay attention to. So let's begin with the recitation and translation of Surat al -Nabha. Verses 1 to 5 depict the question about the Day of Judgment. Verse 1, what are they asking one another? Verse 2, about the great news. Allah says in verse 3, about which they are in disagreement. Mankind are divided to believers and disbelievers regarding the occurrence of this day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns those who deny it, saying, Verse 4, nay, they will come to know it. Verse 5, nay, again, they will come to know it. Verses 6 to 16 depict examples from nature to prove the truth of resurrection. 
verse 6. Have we not to make the earth as a bed? Verse 7. And the mountains and so is pegs to provide, to provide cohesiveness and stability to earth. Modern scientific discoveries found these pegs are driven into the ground like pegs used to anchor a tent. Verse 8. And we have created you in pairs. 9. And have made your sleep thing as a thing for, for rest. Sleep discounties the motion at the end of the discontinues the motion at the end of the day. A resting time for human efforts seeking sustenance. This is just one other mercy of Allah. 10. And have made the night as a covering for its darkness. The darkness covers you just as your garment covers your body. The covering night produces a quiet environment meant to reside in and to become still. Verse 11. And have made the day for livelihood. Allah produced shining light in it from the sun so that people can manage their affairs and function to produce their livelihood which he subhanahu wa ta'ala has already ordained for each individual in appropriate measures verse 12 and we have built above you seven stories heavens seven wide high high firmly and beautifully constructed without supporting columns beautified with stars chariots the sun and the moon the sun as a shining lamp as Allah says in verse 13, and have made therein a shining lamp. The lamp illuminates the whole universe to provide light as well as heat, allowing growth and, and energy. Verse 14, and we have sent down from the rainy clouds abundant water. The benefits of water are remarkable indeed. Verse 15, that we may produce, produce with rare corn and vegetation, eaten by man and animal and used in various useful means. Verse 16, and gardens of thick wood, with different fruits, fragrance, taste and smell produced in one single piece of land. All above the favours of Allah is so vivid. How could the disbelievers make use of all these bounties? and yet deny the resurrection. Verses 17 to 20 reveal signs of the day of judgment. Verse 17, verily the day of decision is a fixed time. This time <coughs> does not increase nor decrease, nor it is to be postponed. And no one knows its specific occurrence except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse 19, and the heavens shall be opened and it will become as gates. Allah, allowing the passage of descending angels. Verse 20, and the mountains shall be moved away from their places, and they will be as if they were a mirage. <laughs>
verse 21 to 30 revealed the fate of those who rejected the leaf. Verse 21, freely hell is a place of amber. Verse 22, a dwelling place for us persons. Virgin, those who transgress the boundary limits set by Allah, like the Gafar, disbelievers, Mushrikeen, worshipping other than Allah, hypocrites, sinners, criminals. Verse 23, they will abide there in Aqaba. Aqaba, one after the other forever as related by Qatar al-Hassan al-Basri and other prominent scholars of the Salaf. Most of them mentioned that each haqab is 80 years. Verse 24. Nothing cool shall they taste therein nor any drink. Verse 25. Except boiling water and dirty wine discharges. The dark fluid is the first drink water from the select tears and wounds of the people of hell. Verse 26, an exact re recompense according to their evil crimes. Allah is all justice, punishment is all just. They will be punished to find. Verse 27, for verily they use not color for rational. They did not believe that everything will return to Allah, and therefore they did not prepare for this day. 28, but they bellied our eye completely. The proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, together with the guidance shown to them by Allah's messengers, were faced with rejection and denial. Verse 29, and all things we have recorded in a, in a book. Verse 30, so taste you the results of your evil actions. No increase shall we give you except in torment. It will be said to the people of hell, taste what you are suffering. We shall not grant you an increase except similar torment, and so it shall progressively multiply. What about those who fear Allah and accept the message of Tawheed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the following ayat some of their conditions. <laughs> Verse 31 to 36 reveal the reward for the righteous. Verse 31 barely for the mustaking. There will be success paradise. Verse 32 gardens and good kings. Verse 32 and companions of each other. Verse 34 the folk of your special things. Verse 35, no falsehood shall they hear therein nor lying. Verse 36, a reward from your rub, a sufficient gift.
Verses 37 to 40 are about the day of judgment. 37 from the rub of the heavens and the earth and whatsoever is in between them, the most beneficent. None can dare to speak with him on the day of resurrection except with his leave. Verse 38, the day of the wrath and the angels will stand forth in rows. None shall speak except him who the beneficent Allah allows, and he will speak what is right. Verse 39, that is the true day they deny. So whoever will, let him take a return to his love. A straight return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying him in this word world we like. Verse 40, verily, we have warned you of near torment the day when man will see that the deeds which his hands have sent forth, and the disbeliever will say, Woe to me, would that I were dust. This word, the great news, affirms the day of reckoning and provides a beautiful as well as terrifying illustration for what happens on that day. These are facts and verses from Allah who contemplate what Allah guides us to re-examine our stand in this life in relation to his justice and aim to comply with his commands. Amen. Amen.